Hey Chiefs Kingdom, welcome back to the RGR Football Channel on YouTube. My name is Daniel Harms. I'll be doing another film review for you guys. Um, for those of you that are brand new to the channel, make sure you're hitting the like, the sub, bell notification. That bell notification is for you just so you have up-to-date information on everything that Ryan and I drop on a weekly basis. And my previous review was more offensive based. Obviously, I did that earlier in the week and I had a lot of requests for the defensive part. And Yes, we're going to get into some of the, the defensive issues, more of a debacle, really, when we talk about it, frankly, that happened against the Raiders in this game. But I want to kind of start off with some of the things that we saw, just laying out some groundwork here. The Raiders used a ton of tendency breakers against the Chiefs that they, did, that they don't really use throughout the year. Um, Ian Ingold, the, the, the fullback for the, the Raiders, has... 14 targets on the entire season. Seven of them have come against the Chiefs themselves in those two games. So that's something that he, that Gruden clearly sees is an issue that he could exploit using some of those checkdowns with the fullback and typically not even just the fullback, some tight ends as well. You had guys that had one catch, Zay Jones, Drew Carrier, like these guys, or Darren Carrier, I remember his first name, but Carrier had, these guys have one catch and either of them were going for first down. So the John Gruden and the Raiders had a very good game plan. Again, for Spags, who did kind of adjust, we saw that the deep shots weren't really downfield as much as they were in the first game, but he still continued to stack the box and really try to stop the run and, again, force Derek Carr to throw the ball. And I expect if they were ever to see them again to that change, just because now we have two games in a row, pretty much against the Chiefs, where he went ahead and was more... A, a, more of a downfield passer so we're going to go ahead and just kind of lighten the load a little bit first with some good news <laughs> some good things that happened in this game um let's focus on willie gay here this is something that the raiders do a lot of uh coming out in their base their base offensive personnel with a two tight ends a fullback and they can switch in and out of what they're doing um you know and then Willie Gay does an excellent job of seeing downhill one that Chris Jones is going to get that pressure upfield. And so he comes down and just levels the running back there. So much fun to watch. I tell you what, he is not only earning more playing time, but with the games against the Raiders and the, the different types of formations that they use with fullbacks and tight ends, he had, to have, he had to play more because having those three linebackers on the field is something that I think that the Raiders wanted to exploit from the Chiefs, and that, it did work out pretty well for them. But this, this read and hit that Jones is coming up field and he's going to have to bounce it outside on Jacobs, this is just one of those read-react plays that we see from Willie Gay, you know, game in and game out. And that, that's just what you want to see from him. Just get those snaps in and find a way to make some plays. Yeah, you're going to make some mistakes, which he did in some zone coverages here and there. But again, finding those downhill running lanes and getting into the backfield, um, stopping that run right there by Jacobs and for a really, really good, a really short run. So here, you know, we see that the Raiders come out more in a three wide receiver set, which they don't do a lot of. Uh, this is one of the, the sets they were more successful in. And I want to kind of show you really quickly what I, what I mean is you can pretty much see that they've got man coverage across the board. Everyone's lined up. You had Willie Sneed on Nelson Aguilar, their biggest targeted deep threat in this game, which is a little bit confusing considering they took Henry Ruggs in the first round. But again, sometimes game script dictates that. You don't really expect Nelson Aguilar to continue to produce. He has. So that's kind of the issue there. But, again, they do a really good job of being more physical at the, at the, at the line of scrimmage. You can see everyone pretty much in uh, press man coverage. And they're, gonna, they're just going to get some pressure on, on uh, Derek Carr here just a little bit right there. You see Chris Jones coming up, and that's going to make him make a, make a decision quickly. And, and that's all you really need to do. He gets it to Brian, Brian Edwards, and it's a short game because uh, Traverius Ward's one of the best tackling corners in the NFL, actually, which is something I, I was surprised to learn over the weekend after this game. So again, just you can see that this is what they wanted to do. They wanted to force Derek Carr to throw the ball underneath. And it's what he's shown against most of the teams to this point. He's been more liberal with the deep shots downfield against the Chiefs. And that's just kind of something that they're going to have to adjust to if they ever see them again and going forward because they 
have now shown Derek Carr has that ability. Now let's go ahead and get to some of the issues that we saw from the Chiefs defense. One, the first, the very first third down of the game is the most painfully obvious one. Unfortunately, man, I tell you what, Darren Waller is not only a matchup problem, he's one of the most exploitable for this defense that they've seen. If they're going to put, continue to put basically safeties on him and you essentially you're going to want to have a bigger corner like a Bashad Breland on Waller, but that forces you to play a little bit more of one of your safeties on the faster guys that can cut in and out of, you know, the breaks quickly like Ruggs or Aguilar. You don't really want that either. So it's a matchup problem specific to the Chiefs that the Raiders did a very good job exploiting. So, I mean, this is pretty much man coverage across the board for the Chiefs. Let's see, you got uh, – and then there's Dan Sorensen. Again, like I said, he's going to have Darren Waller right here. And the, the beauty of this is they don't allow Waller to get pressed up on. They don't want someone like Breland coming in and being more physical and, and throwing off that timing of the route. And the one thing I want you to, to kind of watch is, you know, Sorensen's feet. If you can it, – it's really – it's a problem when you've got a, a tight end coming out of the backfield here – basically getting up to full speed down the field and Dan Sorensen's feet are just standing still. That's what this entire play really came down to because everywhere else they did a good job and the pressure was really just literally just about to get there. Um, they have it coming up up the middle right there. Frank's right there. You got Jones off the side um, right here is what I'm talking about. Excuse me, guys up the middle with, Frank Clark did a little roundabout here with his stunt. Jones is coming down off of his stunt, and they're getting pushing guys into the backfield, forcing Carr to then make a decision. But again, you're not really forcing anyone to make a decision when you've got Darren Waller screaming down the field against a flat-footed Dan Sorensen. And again, like I said, if he doesn't have anywhere else to go with this football, I mean, everyone else is matched up right now, and that's the biggest issue that they had again. And when you don't have one... Thornhill playing as a deep safety that really kind of mitigates what they could do because I love Tyron Matthew he's a great safety he's just not a single high safety you can use him he's much better as a robber role underneath and being able to break on the quarterback size in a deep safety position this is not ideal for him it's also not ideal to have Dan Swanson on the linebacker or excuse me but on Darren Waller but here we are talking about it again so it's just it's a bad problem to have and I want to just show you really quickly what I'm, I was talking about with the, the shorter throws that they've adjusted to. Derek Carr still is Derek Carr. A lot of these teams that they're playing, Derek Carr is getting the ball out quick and underneath. And Juan Thornhill is playing underneath coverage. He's not playing as a deep safety. So that may have been a, an attempt to, to throw them off a little bit. But he's going to break on the uh, Hunter Renf the Renfro over route. Just, it's just a short little over route, but he's going to beat – Fenton he's going to beat Fenton just just to quickly to the inside but that's the the type of throw that they've been making and they've been keeping it quick quick like that and that's why he broke right there because he created that little bit of separation and then Carr comes back and beats him on the outside so that's some of the the, the issue that we saw in especially on that that first play there is just because you have a player matched up one-on-one -on -one in a bad position and then not executing his job. He needs to be already drifting backward. He needs to let himself get a little bit more momentum in order to not allow Darren Waller just to blow by him. And he just got blown by there. And it, unfortunately, Dan Sorensen was some of the, uh, excuse me, the bigger issues that we saw from that game. Uh, here's another third down, unfortunately. There are in more three tight end sets. And the Chiefs are they're doing a zone blitz here. And then Darren Waller is getting the ball in the flat. That's one of the big problems. The flat coverages that the Chiefs have had against fullbacks and tight ends going to the flat and even just guys sitting in the flat has not been very good. So in my my looks, it's a zone, it's a zone blitz coverage. And you have Willie Gay sitting into this intermediate zone here, just gonna kind of be like running around here and you're going to have Tyron Matthew kind of in an intermediate sideline, but then he takes a step backwards. So it's kind of like he's along the sidelines up here, just kind of waiting for the ball. It didn't look like a flat coverage responsibility to me. 
And then you have Travis Ward kind of going to a deep third. Rashad Breland almost going to a deep third. And Dan Sorensen going to a deep third. So it's, it's an odd type look because when Breland goes back into his, his drop back, he kind of flows with the tight end down here. Or excuse me, that wasn't the right tight end. It was uh, – let's just clear this out. There's too much going on. It was Jason Witten who was running a deeper over route. Jason Witten still runs deep over routes. So Breland's going to kind of go with it and pass it off. And like I said, the biggest biggest thing for me was Taron Matthew and what he was supposed to be doing. I don't have knowledge of what he was supposed to be doing, but it looked like his responsibility was more of this um, outside sideline view. So that tends to happen a little bit. And there's no flat coverage on the side there. And, you know, Darren Waller's just going to sit there. And again, when Matthew takes that step back, that's really what kind of confused me a little bit. You've got everybody kind of matched up over here. You've got Willie Gay underneath. Um, if you can keep him underneath and you don't have to break on this over route from Jason Witten, and then you can just keep on the flat guy here. And unfortunately for the Chiefs, we have two linebackers blitzing. <laughs> so you've got one here who's getting bottle blocked, and then you've got Anthony Hitchens free to Derek Carr. Now, if he can just get here, just even just a little bit, he's forced to either hold onto this ball and take a sack or throw it away, in which case he throws it away, guess what? Intentional grounding. Or maybe he gets it into the area of um, Darren Waller. But still, it, it's an unfortunate set of circumstances that led up to some of these big plays and, again, missed tackles. I, I kind of have a hard time putting a lot of that on Matthew. He's probably – I mean, Darren Waller is probably double the size of, of Matthew, so I can't really blame him for, for missing a tackle like that against a guy who is that athletic. So just execution issues continuing to pop up. And one of the biggest problems, again, like we, we've talked about, is having safeties on bigger guys. I mean, Sorensen on Waller, Matthew now on Waller. They're, they're, they, they don't match up well with him. And in the open field, missed tackles like that are going to cost you, and they, can, they cost the Chiefs a lot. Um, and, again, we're going to go back – to Dan Sorensen and it's not to pick on him because obviously he had a great game winning interception you don't that, that kind of stuff happens that's what he does he is one of the only guys on the team that has the shortest memory I've ever seen he doesn't care about not not not, not saying he doesn't care he's so quick to make those changes and just to kind of block it out that when it happens you know he acts like it didn't happen and it, it that's what you want to see from that kind of a player who's really kind of a a jack of all trades and sense that he doesn't do anything at an elite level except for make game closing interceptions. So here's Dan Sorensen. Raiders come out to this close personnel here. And this is the biggest thing. Again, we've talked about it earlier in this, this, this video, the Raiders were doing a bunch of short route concepts. They didn't do anything a lot deeply in terms of anything differently in terms of using these short route concepts. And they did it again here. And they're going to have what looks to me like a cover three shell here. But you're going to see – just let me see, see it for yourself so you can see the play. This is the, uh, the, the drop pass by Engel, the fullback, down here at the bottom of this formation where Dan, Dan Sorensen is just kind of in no man's land here. And then he's forced to go back and make a – try to make a play on the football. So my apologies for not letting you see that through. But like I said, it's like a, a three, a cover three shell is what it looks to me. And then you have all short, short, you know, short stuff here. They all just kind of waited at that because it's second to five. So they're trying to get five yards and no, there's nothing opening up. So you have Recognition from both the corners themselves, Breland Ward, seeing that there's no other deep, there's no deep route concepts in this this play, so they jump on those underneath routes, and that forces Derek Carr to then look for elsewhere with the football. Um, then he sees Ingle just kind of sitting over here, and Ingle's just going to widen it and go up deep because Dan Sorensen jumps in on this route instead of staying with the fullback to the flat. Again, flat coverages were an issue against this team and it continued to pop up even though he didn't get the pass in the flat it ended up costing them on this play because he jumps this right here he steps inside toward Aguilar but you also have Breland coming downhill to this route and then you're going to see 
uh, Clark right here is trying to step into a, a throwing window here also on Aguilar. So you got like three guys all honed in on, on Nelson Aguilar, which is something I never thought that I would say, to be honest with you. So Derek Carr is just going to come out here and gold's coming up and, you know, Clark does a really good job of sliding under this block, but they just, they couldn't get pressure enough in this game to, to get home on these types of plays because there's seemingly always a broken coverage or a guy in the flat that was easy for Carr to get to. And that was the biggest problem that I noticed. Not so much that the pass rush couldn't get there because there was multiple times they did get in the area. Now, that's not to say that they were good, mind you. They were they had their struggles with this offensive line. They had their struggles in the first matchup in this offensive line. But they had at least four or five plays. I've showed you about three of them already where they had an opportunity to get to the quarterback and a busted coverage allows Derek Carr to get home, get away free or not necessarily in terms of a, a turnover or a, a, a fumble or a, excuse me, a, a sack, but maybe a, a thrown, thrown the ball away on third down, that sort of thing, or get to a third down from a throwaway. So busted coverages, just miscommunications and issues with, execution really are what plagued the Chiefs defense in this game and again we I think we can kind of put a little bit on Spags not thinking that Derek Carr is going to try to continue to throw the ball downfield I like I said I don't think that's going to happen again if they ended up meeting meeting for a third time this season and I definitely don't think it's going to happen going forward so I hope that this was a little more enlightening for you guys on the defensive side I know it was a lot of negativity but again we did see some good things out of Willie Gay and they're still adjustments that have to happen throughout the season. I, I, I truly believe that the, the, defense, the defense did not think the car would again come out and do what he has been doing for a lot of the season, but he, he wants to take it to the Chiefs. So I can understand some adjustment process there. So they're going to have to have a better mindset and play with better execution the next time they play going into next year. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. This was, uh, it's always kind of fun to go over the defensive side to see what's, what's going on. Same with the offense. Like, so just, if you guys have any questions, anything you want to want to see next time, just go ahead and drop in the comments. Uh, I appreciate y'all. So thank you for coming in and seeing this. Have a great day. Thanks for watching this video from the team at RGR Football. Click these videos to see more and subscribe to RGR Football.